Every once in a while in science, we get a massive discovery. And today is one of those days. Actually, back in July 2023 is what was one of those days where we found and discovered and actually got photographic evidence of humpback whales having sex. We're going to talk about the discovery and a little bit of a twist on this episode of Ocean Talk. Let's start the show. Hey everybody, welcome back to another exciting episode of Ocean Talk. I'm your host, Andrew Lewin, and this is where I talk all things oceans so that you can be more aware of what's happening in the ocean so that you can help live for a better ocean by taking action. And on today's episode, we're gonna be talking about humpback whales. And humpback whales, you know, we've seen a lot. Humpbacks have been, are just a majestic animal. They've had quite the interesting lifespan in terms of the last, you know, 200, 300 years or so where, you know, humans have been hunting them for their oil and that happened for a long time like hundreds of years and then all of a sudden there was and all of a sudden you had to stop hunting them and then we've seen their recovery so it's been quite a conservation success all across the world they happen all across the world these beasts are huge there's one particular population that goes from hawaii in the winters to the arctic in the summers that have been of interest lately this population has been studied quite a bit in maui where their breeding grounds are and their calving grounds are uh, but they've also been followed all the way up across the pacific up the west coast of north america into canada and into the arctic and it's just a magnificent migration we've seen the videos we've seen the tagging we've seen how difficult it is to journey with a mother and a calf but something we've never Ever captured is humpback whales having sex. I know it's weird. I know it's weird to say that. I really do. I understand it's weird, but we've never captured it. We don't really know how it goes on. I mean, we know the, the theory of it, but we don't really know how it goes on and we've never really captured it until now. We've captured it in photographs. And the story of this really, really interesting. And I had a detailed conversation with Stephanie Stack from the Pacific Whale Foundation, who was involved in this capturing of this wildlife. Two of her photographer friends and people who work with her have been involved in this. They're the ones who took the photographs. And the story is actually amazing. She was telling me that the two photographers, Lyle and Brandy, were on a boat. They were having lunch, so their engines were off. They were just kind of chilling in these breeding grounds. And then they decide, you know what? There's some two, there's two whales over there. Let's see if we can just put our cameras into the water and just take some photographs and see if we come up with something. See if we can get some good images, right? Like just it's out of the blue, just like I'm gonna put it down. I'm not even gonna really look. I'm not even gonna look at it, where the lighting's coming from or anything like that. And they just put it in and boom, they capture two whales having sex. Something they didn't even realize until they got back to shore and they started looking through their camera rolls and being like, Oh my gosh, what do we have here? And something that is absolutely amazing and phenomenal. So they went over to their friend, Stephanie Stack of Pacific Whale Foundation. They said, hey, Stephanie, you need to take a look at this. And you need to take a look really close because not only do we think that we have two humpback whales having sex for the first time on, in a photograph, but can you take a look and make sure that it's a male and female because we have a feeling they're both males. She takes a look, finds out they are both males. So essentially we have the first image of humpback whales having sex and they're both males. I'm not going to go into the details of what this means in terms of the worldwide kind of thing, of go everything going on in the world uh, with the LGBTQ community, but this is just something that scientists have known for a while. We've seen other marine mammals as having same sex sex and that's just a natural occurrence in the wild so that's all i'm going to leave it to it was something that i thought was pretty special but the fact that we had photographers on the water just so happened to see two humpback whales decided to say hey you know what we're going to put our cameras in there and then to have the wherewithal to go to their friend who's a scientist who they've worked with in the past as citizen scientists and be able to understand the discovery and and, and the contribution to knowing more about humpback whales in the future. Now, to say that N equals one, the sample size of you know one incident where we see you know two males having sex, two humpback whales having sex, it's not gonna answer a lot of questions for humpback whales in general. However, it is gonna reveal a little bit more of humpback whales, and hopefully we can start to understand the parameters that surround like, what is the best time to have sex? Where can we capture more animals of this species having sex? And to see where that goes into the future. But I have to give kudos and respect to Brandy and Lyle, who were the photographers who took those images and will be forever in the books of cap being the first to capture humpback whales having sex in the ocean. I just think it's one of those, one of those incidents, one of those times where you're just like, this is awesome. What are the odds of someone, two people sitting out on the ocean in a breeding ground, not like there are no, there was no evidence like of fo on photograph or on video of whales having sex. And all of a sudden 
they're just there because they're out on the ocean. It just goes to show folks that if you're out on the ocean more and more and more, right? And you start to participate in citizen science work or start to volunteer or have some sort of relationship with a local nonprofit, you can have these discoveries. There's a potential, I'm not going to say it happens every day because it doesn't, but there's a potential that you will be able to contribute to science. You'll be able to contribute to the understanding of a species that we don't know a lot about. Considering all the studies that we've done on humpback whales and all the studies we've done on marine mammals, we still don't know a lot about their lives and we want to know more. And so to be able to be on the water, right, just having that talent, that professionalism of being a photographer and then putting your cameras in the water to be able to take that picture, absolutely phenomenal. Something that uh, we need to have more of and more people need to be out on the ocean, including myself. I understand I live in Ontario. I'm not out on the water enough in the Great Lakes, let alone in the ocean. I need to do the same thing just to be there to understand not only how you can contribute to science, but also just being in nature and being happy. If you ever read a book, Blue Mind, now is the time to do it because Blue Mind is a book that tells you how you know, oceans and the, just the color blue is helpful in your mindset and your mental health. It's written by Dr. Wallace J. Nichols, and Jay is a phenomenal scientist, as well as, you know, he's been pushing this idea for a long time, and it, it makes more and more sense each and every day. So check out that book. I'll put a link in the show notes. I don't get any affiliate from this. This is just uh, Jay's a friend of mine, a colleague, and uh, I want to support him more. And I feel like his book can help you understand more why being around the ocean is so important. And uh, yeah, that's just a side note, a tangent that I go on. But uh, I think it's really, I think it's really interesting. Anyway, that's the episode. Nothing too long today. I just wanted to talk to you about this major discovery. If you want to know more about this, you can go to my audio podcast where I interview Stephanie Stack that tells the whole story and the contributions to that. You can check that out on how to protect the ocean podcast follow subscribe whatever you'd like to do on your favorite podcast app and of course don't forget if you want more information on the ocean to subscribe and hit that notification button so you don't miss any of the episodes i drop on tuesdays and thursdays and thank you so much for listening to this episode of ocean talk i'm your host angelo and have a great day we'll talk to you next time and happy conservation